Joining me today is Trevor Cocktail Ninja Schneider. Trevor, it is a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming by. It's very nice to meet you as well, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Before we get into everything here, I, I have to ask you, Cocktail Ninja, how did we get the nickname? <laughs> Where did this come from? So I'll try to keep it short because I know we don't have a tremendous amount of time. <laughs> but essentially, um, rewind, I think it's about 10, 12 years. There was a gentleman by the name of Tom Cruise that was in a movie called The Last Samurai. Okay. Uh, I used to work at a rooftop bar in New York called 235th. Uh, as you can see, and for the listeners out there, I have a man bun on my head. Uh, I was a struggling actor and getting a haircut in New York was rather expensive. So working in hospitality, I had to pull my hair back and I started to obviously start to pull it up like a samurai. Okay. Right? So you were an early adopter of the man bun. I was an early adopter of the man bun. I think it's been about 12 years, 13 years. Okay. And it all was inspired by not having enough money to get my hair cut. <laughs> and then I was always flaring bottles and throwing stuff around. And uh, Tom Cruise was obviously in a movie called The Cocktail uh, in oh, 1988, yes. which had its 30 year anniversary, I believe, last year. And so somebody mashed, another bartender mashed The Cocktail and The Last Samurai, and what was born out of that was the Cocktail Ninja. Okay, I like it. Yeah. I like this history. And if we go through the genealogy of the man bun, I feel like you're going to be up there <laughs> at the ver at the forefront. I mean, of in, the maybe in the cocktail <laughs> industry. Maybe in the cocktail industry. But so here's what's interesting about this, too, is you, you say this all kind of started when you were a struggling actor and mm -hmm. you were serving bar, but now this has become your career. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting path, uh, much to my parents' dismay, I believe. <laughs> Uh, they're extremely supportive now. I love you, mom and dad. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it kind of just happened in regards to me getting more successful in the industry and the acting kind of not really paying dividends right away. Okay. And uh, it is a career. Uh, it is something that I am fortunate enough to continue to do yeah. and not be laboring like all the bartenders that currently are shout out to you guys i love you guys <laughs> so we're going to talk about Ray Kavaka here in a second too but what's interesting too is that you travel around the country do you travel the world as well or is it more so united states based so technically my territory is the united states okay uh there are sometimes opportunities that take me outside of the united states uh whether that be um obviously iceland i visit iceland quite sure. a bit uh, I was there two weeks ago, and I've been there, I think, nine times now. Um, I love it. It's a beautiful place. We'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I travel quite a bit. Uh, I've been in the position for about five years. August will be five years. And I've traveled approximately 150 to 200 days a year. Oh, my gosh. Every one of those years. That's pretty incredible. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot. There's so much. Yeah, it's a lot. When uh, when when rent or mortgage payments are coming in, you're like, why am I wasting my time? So, <laughs> so, so interesting that you actually brought that point up. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, yeah, I recently moved from New York uh, about a year and a half ago down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Because I was tired of paying for my apartment that was a closet yeah. that I was never at. An uninhabited. Yes, <laughs> yes. an uninhabited <laughs> closet. That's a blog. Somebody write that down. There we go. Uh, well, Trevor, so tell us how you got involved with Reka Vodka here, because this is a kind of an interesting story about how they make this product too, but I want to hear how you came to be involved in them. Yeah, so I think kind of going back to what we were just talking about, I was bartending and, you know, doing the late nights and doing it for a very long time and, and high volume bars, cocktail bars, shop bars, all the bars, and my body was kind of breaking down. Sure. So I was trying to find a way to continue to leverage all my experience and time invested in the industry, but being supportive of my body and being able to continue and pick up where I kind of left off. So I'd started inquiring about positions in the industry. I had a lot of friends that were ambassadors that represented many different brands in all parts of the world. And I uh, started asking around in New York because as we know, uh, a lot of the business and a lot of all the business is the people that you know. Yeah. So some opportunities came up. I started with another company, very small and locally, and then had the opportunity with William Grant and Sons. And like I said, uh, August will be my five year anniversary as the national ambassador of Reka Vodka in the United States. That's pretty amazing. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thanks. So let's talk a little bit more about this brand of vodka, because sure. I feel like, you know, uh, on the scale of all the quote unquote sexy brand names that you see, this is one that's a little bit unfamiliar to me. Now, I say that from a standpoint of always have been being a beer guy 
guy until a couple of years ago. My body said, you know what, beer, not for you yeah. anymore. <laughs> uh, so I started exploring different types of liquor. So I'm a little uneducated when it comes to it. But yep. uh, Reka, I still feel is not one that I see on every shelf. Right. So it, the brand, just to get into a little bit of the history, the brand has been around for a while. Um, the company that owns it is William Grandsons. They own other brands like Hendrix Gin, okay. uh, Balvenie Scotch, uh, Glenfiddich Scotch, uh, just to name a few. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so essentially, they used to work with another vodka that shall not be named. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with them, but I just, they don't sign my paychecks, right? <laughs> That's right. So uh, the brand kind of just got put on a little bit of the back burner for that time being why they were involved in the other partnership. And now we're trying to start to build it out and sure. be more aware, which is one of the reasons, obviously, I get to meet you. Yeah. And I'm sitting in front of you speaking to all of your listeners and, <laughs> and trying to share Rekha Vodka with the world. <laughs> well, the story of how it's all made, I find pretty fascinating. So why don't we start with, with how that works? Sure. I was reading a little bit through, but I feel like you can probably give me a better description yeah. of what uh, what goes on. We can weed through. So um, essentially, it's one of the first Icelandic vodkas sold here in the United States. Okay. One of the biggest When you say points, one of the first, are there a lot of Icelandic vodkas? So every time I go back, I feel like there's like two or three more. Oh, okay. And I was just there two weeks ago. And so what I was reporting back was that there was like five. Okay. Now I feel like there's like nine. There's only two, as far as I know, that are exported. Okay. Are you familiar with Game of Thrones? Yes. So the gentleman that plays the mountain. Yes. He has his own vodka and Which other spirits. Sense. Why and not now, out? <laughs> and now it's here. It's being distributed in the United States. Okay. Uh, previous to that, uh, Reka was the first. And the only Icelandic vodka distributed here in the U.S. I would not have known Iceland, hotbed for vodka. So I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Jeff. You <laughs> segued me right into my next point, which is that basically 60% of the final product of this bottle is Arctic spring water or arguably some of the purest glacial water in the world. Okay. So with that being said, that makes up not only just for Reka, but for almost all vodkas, they use approximately 60%. It could be 50, it could be 65, but approximately 60%. Sure. So that's a big thing based on the quality of the water that's in Iceland. And obviously there's a lot of ice, or I should say glaciers and all mm. of that happening there. The second big point about Reka and its production is that we use lava rock as our filtration mechanism, okay. which is a natural, effective, efficient way to remove impurities based on the porous quality of the rock, which is essentially like a sponge. The impurities stay in the stone and then the beautiful spirit comes out on the other side. So those two things obviously are very, very big and deep rooted in Iceland, hence us saying we're made of Iceland. Yes. Okay. So those are the first two that I love to lead with. The next one is a big one, and that's geothermal energy. We harness the core temperature of the planet to distill our spirit. Okay. And that's made in a very unique still called a Carter head still. And that still was originally produced to produce gin. But where we would be putting botanicals to produce that gin, we actually put lava rock in there hmm. so that the spirit can interact with the rock. And then again, like I said, just remove some of the impurities and make it more of a pure spirit. If you ask me to take a test right now on how <laughs> other vodkas are made, I would not be able to tell you. But based on your description of how Reka comes about, I it sounds as though it's a lot different than what most people are doing. It's it's different. There are similarities, but we do have some unique stuff that's very ownable to us. There's no other vodka in the world that uses Arctic spring water okay. as their water source. There's no other vodka. There are other spirits that okay. use it. Um, and I don't believe that there's another vodka that uses lava rock as a filtration mechanism. I've never heard of that before. But there are yeah. other spirits that utilize it as a filter. Full disclosure to all the listeners right now, before I booked the, I'm sorry to say, after I booked this interview, I actually tasted it for the first time. Yeah. Um, I had never had it before. I just I booked the interview and then happened to be at an event that night where I saw it on the shelf and I tried it. And I was, I was thinking, this is going to be scary because if it's bad, <laughs> this is going to be a rough interview. But. It's really good. Some like, say that would be a coincidence, Jeff. <laughs> I don't believe it is. It was meant to be. And now you're pouring some out. Does this mean we get to try it here today, I, too? I think we should we should sample some. <laughs> He's done interviews before, folks. This is really good. <laughs> Just, you know, you got to give some to the listeners. Right, let's go ahead and do so, this. A, so right. if we professionally taste, right, you obviously taste with your eyes first. Sure. Then, you know, you'll probably smell it. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. then what you want to do is if we're, if you want like to spit, you can obviously use this cup. <laughs> well, spit. What are we Just, talking about? We drink responsibly. Jeffrey. We do. 
So, so the first sip is just kind of the clean your palate from whatever you've had before, whether it's lunch or breakfast, whatever it okay. is. So don't evaluate, just have a sip. And either swallow or spit. And then the next one, what I want you to do is to let it linger in your mouth a little bit. I won't go as far as to do the mouthwash thing. Okay, yeah. But if you feel inclined to do that, do that. <laughs> and then we, after you swallow it, open your mouth, suck in like this, okay. close your mouth, and then breathe out. And then okay. think about what you're tasting. Okay. Here we go. All right here. Huh. So your tongue is deciding yeah. if what your eyes and your nose have already kind of concluded. Okay. And now this is like telling you the rest of the description of what we put in our mouth. Is it going to kill us? You know, <laughs> is it is it going to be good food? Is right. it dessert? What is it? Because essentially that's our palates were designed to taste things and keep us alive. So obviously this is definitely not going to kill you. No, it is well, quite not right lovely. Now. That's for sure. Yeah. That's very good. It's it's very soft. It's very delicate. It reminds me in a lot of ways of just reaching down into a stream in Iceland with a cup of water and and tasting it. It's it's super clean. Yeah. S super refreshing. Um it it I it, it's an oxymoron statement and I have a bunch of these, but like it tastes the way that the water should taste. And there's a lot of that flavor profile in Reka because of the water that we use. Yeah, very smooth. It goes very down smooth. very easy. Uh, I'm not going to ask you for exact price on this, but yeah. pri price point, where does it match so, up? So the range, right, and I'll say it nationally, it, the range is anywhere, I would say, from like 20 to 25. Okay. And that varies from like uh, 750, 750 milliliters to about a liter. Okay. I feel and like that's, that's pretty a, comparable. Yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty it's, good. It's a, it's a loose range. It's there. It's comparable with a lot of other vodkas yeah yeah all right well we have some other business we got to talk about here too because I, I would love to talk about reka all day long but yeah. there's other things going on that reka is involved in and that you are involved in yeah. and one of the things that you're in baltimore uh to talk about too is the summer solstice celebration this is yeah. happening in four different places the party in four places baltimore happens to be one of these places so tell me what this is all about so essentially right in other parts I'm of the world the rest no of please if coming. you need a refill jeff let me know uh i have a couple years of experience porn drinks <laughs> um so what we're doing with the four parties so baltimore is one of the locations uh another one is new york another one is portland oregon and lastly where i will be will be in reykjavik iceland okay and in other parts of the world um kind of based on where they're geographically located they have an extensive amount of light or darkness in different periods of the year so summer solstice is obviously June 21st. And what that means in Iceland is that they have almost 24 hours of light. So an Icelandic tradition is for them to obviously celebrate that. <laughs> All day. I've never seen it before. <laughs> I'm ecstatic because I will see it in June. I spoke to a couple people when I was just there a couple weeks ago and, and they, it's a, it's a, it's like a, it's a fun festival kind of a thing. It's an excitement to be able to participate in the party yeah. essentially because yeah. of all the light. And what I always encourage everyone is if you want to, depending on what you want to see in Iceland, if you want to drive around the whole country, you want to go in the summer because there'll be a lot of light sure. and you can see it versus going around December 21st where they almost have 24 hours of darkness. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 21, but it's a lot close. It's yeah. a lot. So with the party, right, we just kind of want to celebrate that and, and bring a lot of awareness of Iceland and obviously Reka and, you know, share cocktails and maybe some cuisine. And then obviously, you know, just have a pretty fun party. So you said New York, Portland, Reykjavik, and Baltimore. I, yeah. I don't want to downplay Baltimore at all because <laughs> it's a city that I love. It's where I live. But how did Baltimore end up on this list? So it's a, it's a kind of straightforward answer, which is that Portland and Baltimore are our um, kind of focal points for the United States. Oh, okay. And Portland was the first and Baltimore was the second. So we obviously have a lot of um, incentive to share it in these markets where we've decided that we want to focus Reka in Portland and Baltimore. So that's why Baltimore's got the got the juice. Well, if I you like will. it. So what is going to be happening? So you talk about what's going to happen yep. in Reykjavik because yep. you got almost 24 hours of light. It's going to be a big party. What's happening yep. in Baltimore? 
So I think directly, right, like I said, we're going to just kind of focus on featuring cocktails and yeah. Icelandic cuisine and, and then obviously just throw, you know, a fun party. Sure. Do you have any locations by any chance? I think we're still in the works of okay. tying that one down. Sure, so no TBD, <laughs> but it is happening. I'll make sure I spread the word as soon as we find out. <laughs> right for on. Because sure, this sounds very exciting. Awesome. Uh, I also have to ask you, too, about your work with the Puffins, which sure. when the phrase is coming out of my mouth, it sounds kind of strange <laughs> to say. But Reka has teamed up with the... The National Audubon Society. Yes. So tell me more about what that work is all about. So basically, uh, to kind of take where you started and continue it is we've partnered with the Audubon Society here in the U.S. to kind of spread awareness of the puffins being a potential in extinct, sorry, extinct animal. Mm -hmm. And we want to share that with as many people as possible. So the program that we have is that you can essentially adopt a puffin oh. for a very small fee. If you just go to reka.com, the page will pop up and then you can either buy, uh, there's some gear, right? We have t-shirts and we have pins and we have hats and we have just simply adopt a puffin, right? Yeah. Put, uh, I believe it's a dollar. Don't quote me on the price, but I think for a dollar, I think you can essentially sign up and adopt your own puffin, and the proceeds will go towards the cause of helping the puffins. That's out awesome, in Iceland. Yeah, I've never met a puffin in person, but I will say this: they are adorable, and uh, they Super. seem like awesome animals. So they're they're a lot of fun. I've only seen them twice, and they're very fast moving <laughs> when they're in the air. Uh, they're a lot smaller than what people think. And yes, it's not a penguin for everyone. Right. It is a it is a bird. It is a flying bird. Yeah. It's not a penguin. <laughs> it falls kind of in that category, kind of, but it yeah, looks it, like a yeah. penguin, but it's not a penguin. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the efforts yeah. that you're doing for that. Uh, before we wrap things up here, because we do uh, we are running out of time here. Yeah. Uh, I do want to ask you, Trevor, because you are a cocktail ninja. Yeah. Uh, you're working with Ray Kavaka. Yeah. Give me a drink. Like what's make make me a drink in your mind right now. What should I go? home and make with Ray Kavaka. So I have a lot that are just like kind of pouring through my head. I don't have time for a lot, Trevor. I asked you for one. <laughs> so what I've been making a lot lately because my wife really enjoys it is this cocktail that I created called a uh, Spicy Sage Collins. Okay. And it's kind of just a riff on a Tom Collins right. with vodka. I'm writing this down. Yeah. So uh, essentially it is sage infused Reka vodka. Oh, sage which very easy to do if you've got a blender at home, you've got some Reka and you got some sage, put all those in the blender, let that kind of infuse simultaneously, or I should say instantly, and then take that out. And then what I make is a black peppercorn simple syrup, oh. which is, again, very easy. If you know how to make simple syrup, little sugar, equal parts water, put it on the stove, let the sugar dissolve. And then I would throw about an ounce of fresh black peppercorn in there. Let that go into a boil. Let that sit. I know we're running out of time, Jeff. <laughs> You're good. But we have I want to hear more. Fresh lemon and club soda and then obviously garnish it with a big bunch of sage so that your nose can smell it. It's a real easy cocktail. It sounds complex. But it's really not. Uh, I make them for my wife all the time, uh, probably more times than I'd like to sometimes. I love you, honey. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's very refreshing. It pairs great with Reka and the flavor profile. Uh, I know that vodka as a whole maybe is supposed to be colorless, odorless, and flavorless. But again, I have another oxymoron statement, which is Reka is the vodka-flavored vodka. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's very, very tricky. <laughs> You got me on that one, Charlie. You got me on that one. <laughs> but it's the the Spice Sage Collins is, is is it's a great drink. It's a refreshing drink. It's good for a kind of all times of the year, but especially this time of the year as as the seasons are starting to change. Well, it sounds awesome. Trevor, Cocktail Ninja Schneider, before we let you go, where can people go if they want to find out more about Reka? Social media, website, where should people so go? So social media is Reka.com. Okay. Um essentially you can get all the information that you want you can save the puffins there as well and then if you're looking to get after me i am cocktail ninja on instagram very okay. very simple very simple well thank you so much for coming by and telling us more about this looking forward to finding out some more details about the summer solstice celebration that's happening here in baltimore and best of luck to you and all of your travels and everything you're doing this is really cool stuff you got here awesome jeff thank you very much for your time